Hey, what up? It's Tampa Brad back at you with law number 44, like those mirror digits. Uh, law number 44 of the 48 Laws of Power. It is disarm and infuriate with the mirror effect. The mirror effect. So, what this law is talking about is uh, a kind of a trick that you can use, or I mean, it's a it's a larger principle. It's not just a trick, but the fact that the the most powerful this is kind of like a power versus force thing if you're if you've not heard of power versus force go watch my book review video on power versus force the book amazing it's one of my 20 books for 2020 it's great i'll be talking about it a little bit in this video so if you want to get a primer go check out that video and it'll get you spun up for what i'm going to talk about in the first part of this so the uh the mirror effect what's nice about using the idea of a mirror right is that all it does is it's like a taekwondo master right a taekwondo master doesn't put out a lot of force they use the opponent's force against them that's like really good i guess from what i understand people who are really good at martial arts do that uh, people who are really good at brazilian jiu-jitsu do that they use their opponent's force against them and that's what a mirror does if you think about a mirror a mirror doesn't recreate anything right it's passive all it does is reflect back. But it is a highly useful tool if you can control which way a mirror is pointing. It's an extremely useful tool for showing people things. Because when people get to see themselves, like I'm, I'm thinking about examples of this, and like literally earlier today, I was at the driving range hitting golf balls. I'm starting to get into golf, which is amazing. And it was so powerful for me to be able to see a video of myself, basically a mirror of what I was feeling translated into something that I could see, it really helped me to understand what I needed to change. And so that same concept can be used either for you to illuminate what other people could change to be better about themselves without telling them, hey, I think you need to change. Sometimes you can just show someone the way that they're behaving, just very unequivocally in a non-argumentative way, just like, hey, check this out. And if they see something they don't like, it's a lot easier because then they are making the decision, right? They're seeing the image of what they're doing and if they see it and don't like it, then they have made the decision and they're bought into actually changing. So doing something like literally, and, and I, it's, it's not about literally holding up a mirror, it's figuratively. If you're showing someone the results of their actions, right? That can sometimes be a mirror that shows them what the true reality of what they're doing is. And so anytime that you get an opportunity to give someone very clear feedback like that, it's a useful tool for you to inspire change in other people that you know will benefit them. And so in, like in a lot of these videos, I like to try to put a positive spin on these laws because, you know, when you hear the book, like the 48 laws of power, you can be like, wow, that's like must be manipulation tactics from start to finish. And it's really not, you know, you can choose to take it in that way or can choose to take it in a positive way. And so, you know, I love that, I'll pull up the exact name of it, but it's, yeah, disarm and infuriate with the mirror effect. And you certainly can. If, if someone isn't aware that they have a terrible reflection, not even just necessarily physically, but in what they're doing, and you hold up a mirror to it and show them, that can be pretty infuriating. There's a, an example in this chapter of uh, Napoleon Bonaparte and his chief minister, uh, Talleyrand, would do things towards the end of Napoleon's career and his reign, Talleyrand would do things that put on display Napoleon's growing paranoia and uh, how he would just snap at people and how he would lose his cool and how he was really kind of getting overextended and not in his power zone. Talleyrand, when he started flipping sides and realizing, because he was a very smart dude, he wanted to stay in power, when he started realizing that Napoleon was on the downhill slide, he started manufacturing situations where Napoleon would lose his cool in front of all the rest of the general council. Talleyrand would keep his cool and it would show Napoleon the contrast between how he was acting and how Talleyrand was acting and make him actually get even more in his head and just accelerate that downward slide. So you can use it in situations like that if you feel you have to, but I see it as a super uh, helpful, positive tool for allowing people to be bought into and see the need for their own change. Because as someone who, so for me, a business owner, right, leading a team of people on a mission, 
it's very useful for me to be able to give them feedback in a way that's non-threatening and in a way that makes them not hate me, basically, right? Because that's the thing that is tough about giving people feedback is when you give someone too much feedback, they kind of just start hating you. And that sucks. If you're on a team with someone, you don't want them to hate you. You want them to like you. You want them to be happy to be on the team because then they're going to want to stay on the team and the team's going to continue to win and get the results that it's been getting and grow and get better. So in order to give them the feedback, you have to have a way to do it that isn't going to upset them and isn't going to, you know, just set off the alarm bells of I'm not safe or I'm not valued. And so using the mirror effect, setting up situations where they get to just see a reflection of their own actions is super powerful and it's a very valuable concept. Now, one other place that this is an extremely useful tool is in the idea of mirroring reality. And this was used by the con artist Yellow Kid Wild. And uh, he set up this super intricate bank, uh, I almost said heist, but it's not a con, but a bank con where he would set up a fraudulent bank. So he would find a building, he'd run out a building, he would get uh, a local thug deposes a security guard. He would get a bunch of call girls and bookies to come in and act. As, you know, they get a couple to act as tellers. They get a couple of people to come in and act like they were making deposits, doing normal bank activities. And they would. He would then go find. This is Yellow Kid. He would then go find a wealthy investor, bring him to the bank, telling him that he had an investment opportunity for him. Sit him down in the lobby. They'd ask to see the bank president. And they'd be told they were going to wait because in reality, nobody ever gets to just come in and see the bank president. They have to wait. So they wait for 30 minutes and as they're waiting, there's normal bank activity, people going in and out, you know, tip their hats to the security guard, everything's cool. They finally get let in and then the wealthy investor makes a deposit of $50,000, which this is in like the 1800s. He'd make a deposit of 50 grand into the fraudulent bank. They'd split the cash, all dip out, and now they just made 50 Gs and the guy got conned. Now, why did that work? Why would the person not see through the very obvious, you know, fake bank. I mean, there, there would be telltale signs everywhere. It's because at first glance, it passed the, the duck test, excuse me, the duck test, right? It walked like a duck and it quacked like a duck. So it must be a duck. And if you use that type of idea to your benefit, you can set up situations to where if you're mirroring reality and you check enough of the boxes, I'm not saying to con people into giving you $50,000 by setting up a fraudulent bank, but you can extrapolate that idea into other ways to use that concept and use it to get people more comfortable in a situation, right? So if you're trying to have someone come into a situation where you want them to be comfortable, let's say it's, uh, let's say it's employment, right? So like, let's say you're an employer who hires a lot of veterans. If you're hiring a lot of, a lot of veterans, you want to mimic the experience that they had during their service career. So you want to set up things like SOPs, standard operating procedures. You want to use terms like SOP that they're going to be used to hearing. You want to have evaluations. You want to have a chain of command. You want to have an organization chart. Things that they are going to be expecting to see will make them more comfortable. It'll make them more bought in more quickly and you'll get results from them faster. So just like that, you know, for, for you to really get value out of books like this or videos like this or really anything that's a conceptual idea, you have to be able to take a, a thought like, okay, this guy uses the mirror effect to create a fake bank. How can I use that in my business or in my you know dealings with other people? How can I take this idea from over here, this, this uh, implementation of the idea, and how can I use it in something that I need to make happen? If you can bridge the gap between those two and come up with your own example, then that you get to unlock the real power of, you know, no, no pun intended, but the 48 laws of power. So think through that as you're watching through these videos. I know as we're, we're getting to the end, I want to get more meta and plug in some more of that more meta understanding of how to use these ideas. And so that's one of them is being able to think, I think, I believe that's called lateral thinking being able to take an idea here in this context and apply it here in a different context, but understand it's the same idea being applied in both. So that said, I hope that you are getting a lot of value out of these. You know, if you are, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. It really does help me a lot. It helps the channel. And the more subscribers that we get on the channel, the more people the video gets shown to, and it benefits, you know, basically everybody that gets to see it, hopefully spreading good ideas and getting people in their power centers. A phrase I've been saying a lot is, 
you know, are you speaking from power or are you not speaking from power? Like, are you in your strength zone or are you out of your strength zone? If you expand your strength zone and the, the things that you're competent and where you feel, the situations you feel comfortable in by say, learning about the 48 laws of power and being able to recognize more situations, if you expand your strength zone, you're gonna be able to get a lot more done and uh, you're gonna be able to win people over to your cause, recruit people for whatever you know interest you, you're in and inspire action in others, which is the most valuable skill at the end of the day. So that said, if you would subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Also follow me on Instagram, I'm at Tampa Brad there. Look forward to seeing you very soon for Law 45 of the 48 Laws of Power coming at you very quick. Thanks for your attention. Peace.